One of this year's Academy Award nominees for documentary filmmaking takes us back to a radical time in New York City and in the country. But you may be surprised at its focus. How to Survive a Plague is a look at the way activists took charge of the race to find a cure for HIV AIDS, and it traces the birth of the radical group ACT UP. We'll talk to one of ACT UP's original members, Peter Staley, who is prominently featured in the Oscar-nominated film in just a minute. But first, here's the trailer for the documentary. They engage in offensive and revolting conduct that has led to the proliferation of AIDS. If they would keep their mouths shut, nobody would ever say a word. We wouldn't know anything about it. But no, they march in the streets. They defy you. To be that threatened and to not lay down, to stand up and to fight back is just incredible. We need our government to read this plan to save our lives. Scientists agree with this. Why can't we have it? We are the ones who are fighting for people's lives. We did something remarkable. Hey, with me now is Peter Staley. Peter, welcome. It's a Thank pleasure you. to have you here with us. Great to be here. Now, Peter, I read a reviewer who said that this film could easily have been called How to Stop a Plague, because in effect, that's what ACT UP helped accomplish. What do you think of that assessment? In well, this country, anyway. Yeah. Uh, the AIDS crisis isn't over. I think people know that. Uh, we still have close to one point six uh, million deaths a year around the world. And uh, there are 55,000 new infections in the U.S. every year. So we have a lot of work to do. But the worst years in the U.S. Uh, were brought to an end in 1996 by uh, a really hard push uh, that uh, AIDS activists started in the 80s to force the U.S. government to do the research that would come up with treatments that would save our lives. Um, and uh, what the film shows is this movement, this, this community rising up when they realized that their government didn't care about them, uh, that we were being left to die. Um, and uh, we had to push the entire establishment, the research establishment, the government bureaucrats, to do the right thing uh, to knuckle down, and we had to force two Republican administrations, Reagan and Bush one, to start appropriating uh, dollars at the NIH to do that research. And ultimately, that's what led to treatments that yeah. save eight million lives now. Those of us uh, who remember ACT UP, uh, I think it's safe to say, think of it in terms of its confrontational, in your face, sometimes illegal activities. Peter, do you think that uh, those kind of tactics were necessary for, for you to succeed? Um, yes, I mean, we had what we called uh, an inside-outside uh, tactic, which was uh, keep the pressure on by having large demonstrations, having people with HIV willing to put their bodies on the line, lay down in the street. That was a very shocking thing for the American public to see. Um, and that created uh, the political environment and open the doors for us to go in and to be heard. Uh, but when we sat down at the table, uh, we were usually sitting down from, you know, Nobel laureates right. and, and we had to know our stuff. So we started very early on a, a program of self-education, of learning the science down to the molecular level yeah. of what HIV was doing in our bodies. So we, we, we learned uh, how to push all the areas, the weaknesses in the research, mm -hmm. and we learned how to talk to the pharmaceutical companies about how, to, how they could design clinical trials that would enroll faster and get approved by the FDA. Yeah. And what lessons can organizations struggling for racial equality or economic justice today learn from your activities? Well, I think one of the key things is uh, uh, don't uh, completely uh, try to do your movement through social media, which is what everybody's mm. focused on today. Um, there's no substitute for those weekly meetings where everybody gets in a room and hashes it out. I have yet to see the internet uh, 
provide a tool where people could strategize together and really feel their emotions as they brainstorm and figure out uh, you know, who to target and what to do. Um, so get in a room together, have a weekly meeting, and, and get momentum going that way. Uh, and secondly, uh, become the experts of the, of the movement that you're fighting. The issues. Really do your research. Mm -hmm. Have your demands, have very specific demands, short-term -term demands that are doable, and long-term demands that are, you know, big dreams, but you got to keep your eyes on those too, because sometimes those come true. All right, Peter. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And good luck on the film. Thank you very much.